Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my SE100 Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect exam series. Um, we started topic uh, two last time, which was looking uh, around sort of uh, Cloud Option Framework and the well accepted Framework. Um, so in, in, in part one, we kind of covered um, some of these sort of secure methodologies. Uh, and we're going to continue with that theme in this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is part two of the SE100 uh, Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect topic two. Um, mini little mini part that we've got. So I'm trying to split it to topics and normally two to three episodes within each topic. So again, this, this topic is design solutions that align with CAF and WAF, which is the Cloud Option Framework and the, uh, the Well Architected Framework. So we'll do a bit of an introduction to Azure Landing Zones, then we'll talk about design security with Azure Landing Zones, and then before going to the demo, we'll do an introduction to the Well Architected Framework, or the WAF. Let's talk a little bit about Azure Landing Zones to start with. So Azure Landing Zone is the output of a multi-subscription Azure environment that accounts for scale, security, governance, networking, and identity. And your Azure Landing Zone enables application migration, uh, modernization and sort of innovation, uh, but at the enterprise scale or within Azure. And also, uh, it's an environment for, for hosting uh, your workloads and provisioning through, through code, for example, so automating that, that deployment process. We talk about the sort of types of landing zones. There are two main ones, really. So the first is a platform landing zone. So this is, you know, subscriptions uh, deployed uh, within a centralized service. Um, often operated by one or, or maybe a sort of central team split by function, for example, a networking team, identity, etc. Uh, these will be used for various workloads applications. We then have the application landing zones. So one or more sort of subscriptions deployed as an environment for an application or workload, and you can split those into dev, test, and obviously prod. Let's talk a little bit now about designing security within Azure Landing Zone. So when we talk about security operations and design recommendations, yeah, so we kind of have that design recommendations in the middle and we've got different ones around the side. So um, again, aligning with uh, well, Microsoft Entra reporting, um, definitely an important security operation consideration. Exporting Azure activity logs to Azure monitor logs as well. Enabling Defender for Cloud, and we're going to be looking at Defender for Cloud uh, within the demos within this series. Monitoring patching drift as well, making sure your patches are not kind of out of line on all your servers, make sure they all kind of align for all your servers. Deploying software configurations with Azure policy, very important and a massive recommendation from a security operations perspective. Monitoring, monitoring virtual machine security configuration so you kind of avoid drift and you can do that through Azure policy as well. Again, we'll take a look at Azure policy in later on demos. Making sure you connect resource configuration to log analytics workspaces as well. And finally, log oriented real time alerts with Azure Event Grid. Um, so these are all sorts of security operation design recommendations that you should look at uh, within your landing zone. Let's talk now about access control design recommendations. So, you know, developing a security allow list plan to, to assess services um, like security configuration, monitoring, and alerts. And these create uh, a plan to integrate uh, them with sort of existing services. You then need to really determine the incident response plan for Azure services before moving into production. Make sure you align your sort of security requirements with Azure roadmaps to stay current with your sort of newly released security controls. Finally, you know, implement a zero trust approach for access. And we've mentioned zero trust already so many times in this series. <laughs> We're only in topic two. Uh, and that make sure that zero trust uh, approach for access is for the Azure platform when appropriate. So before we move on to the demo, let's do a bit of an introduction into the Well Architected Framework or WAF. So the Well Architect, the Azure Well Architected Framework is a set of uh, guiding uh, guiding tenants um, that can be used to improve the, the sort of quality uh, of a workload. The framework consists of five pillars, which we can see there, of architectural excellence. So we've got reliability, security, cost optimization, operational excellence and uh, performance efficiency as well. We'll talk about reliability. This is the ability of a system to recover from failures and continue to function. 
Security is obviously protecting your, your applications and data from threats. Cost optimization, which is uh, managing costs to maximize the, the value that they're delivering, the services are delivering. Operational excellence is around operations process that keep uh, a system uh, running in production specifically. And finally, we talk about performance efficiency. This is your build, say, of a system to adapt to changes in, in, in workload and, and load. So let's now um, jump into uh, the demo portal again. Again, we're continuing looking at those security services within Microsoft Azure, uh, Microsoft 365, that are going to help you define and de design your strategy uh, from a security perspective. Welcome back to another demo, and we are going to take a look. So last last demo, if you remember, we looked at um, we looked at the threat intelligence, and this is all threat intelligence that Microsoft help you with, all the information they give you about vulnerabilities that could affect your organization. I want to actually look at exposure management today, and again, it's another feature within Microsoft Defender. And this is um, shows you essentially the exposure management overview. It shows you. Um, your security exposure management, it's an exposure management tool that offers key insights, metrics, and customized initiatives for a centralized overview of your risk landscape. And again, it's not showing you what attacks have been, you know, where you've been attacked, but it's showing you where you're vulnerable. Um, and again, key initiative that shows external attack service protection, shows you what ransomware protection you've got. So I've got 50%, shows you endpoint security, 73%. So gives you an overview. And again, here it tells you how many onboarded devices you've got, how many discovered devices. So it gives you a lot of good information. But these are some of the top metrics that I want to talk about. And here we've got an attack surface map. But here it shows you the percent of uh, missing best practices for identity against on-premises uh, credential theft. So this says you know, the number of secure score points given to ensure best practices for identities are effectively applied against on-premise credential theft. Um, so here we have 100% significant exposure. And we've got nine secure recommendations that we can make. Can export this to PDF, make it part of a security report. But this essentially is telling us to enable conditional access policies to block legacy authentication. It's all defended for identity centers on all domain controllers. You know, protect and manage local admin passwords. Uh, let's see if we can extend that with uh, Microsoft Laps. So again, just uh, showing us what we can do to mitigate this risk and hopefully protect ourselves against, um, you know, uh, on-premise credential theft. Then we've got, you know, a missing percent of best practices for devices so that was uh, that one was identity. This is devices. So again, shows us what 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 the general shows us. We can edit metric values if we want. Shows if there's any affected items. In our case, there's not, so we were kind of clear. But it's not we're going to be clear forever. And then it shows us that we're not compliant here. We can help by blocking all our, all office applications from creating child processes. Um, again, block execution of potential obfuscated scripts. So again, a really good, really, really good um, tool to use. Um, again, to help mitigate against vulnerability and attack surface and, and reduce that attack surface. Um, and again, there's more here about the attack surface. It gives you an attack surface map. So there's my top domain. Then my devices have got total assets 15. Um, so I can click on here and go a bit more into identities. Um, and then we can look at the the cloud here and look at the it shows the critical assets. We've got twelve critical assets here. Um, I can have a click on that. Yeah, it doesn't show us any sort of connections or anything like that. Um, but then if we go further down, attack pass. So this is if you want to see attack path, you can kind of look you know look at defining uh, critical assets here. You can go to a defender for endpoint ball. You can defender identity. All the different sort of attack paths for your different. Um, Microsoft Defender services um, and again what we'll do is actually in the next episode we'll look at the secure score and how that can help you as well so what we're doing here is you know so far we've looked at uh, threat analytics and we've also looked at the the sort of um, exposure management and, and what these are are tools within Microsoft Defender to help you mitigate against risk so it's showing you where you're vulnerable where's your organization vulnerable and what what sort of um, attackers what type of attacks uh, you might be vulnerable from and allowing you to to mitigate that by putting in you know recommendations putting in certain configurations to do that so again hopefully this helps you with your design aspects and thinking about design um for your sc100 exam uh, so yeah that, that's kind of that, that 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 little demo done um got loads of useful links in the in the description one to the uh, measure up um exam topics you know the the exam practice exam sorry should i say and again, there's a discount code for the SE100 as well. So just use that link. 
Um, and hopefully that'll help you, you know, whilst you're preparing for you, you know, do practice, ex practice exam, practice questions is always very helpful. And I also link to the, the GitHub repository where the labs are, but the labs are all kind of case studies for the SE 100 exam. And also um, a link to the Microsoft Learn where you can do some more studying. So thank you everybody for watching until next time. Goodbye.